done countless builds with the OG NFA 12x25s. Tan brown and chromax like these have been my gold standard. But today, that's all in the past. Welcome to Machines and More. What a bright future we have ahead of us, right? I remember when I first got a set of these uh, OG NFA 12 by 25s many years back, and that was the moment I felt like you know, I am a true connoisseur now. Today, I'm happy to introduce the NFA 12 by 25 G2s to you. We saw these at Computex a few weeks ago, and they are finally here. It's the next generation of the now seven-year-old OG A12 by 25, which has served well and actually will continue to serve well. These have a storied history in many of your builds, and they've definitely been a staple in mind over the years. In addition to sharing with you the updates to the G2, I will also walk through some performance testing, some use cases for these, and I'll illustrate why, in my opinion, the G2 is the best 120 millimeter fan that you can get right now and starting today. Before we begin, big thanks to Nocta for sending these by head of launch. These were provided by them for the purpose of my testing and evaluation and no cost to this channel. However, this video is not sponsored by them. My reviews feature independent testing and my objective evaluation. What does really matter though is your engagement. So if you would kindly take a moment, make sure that you are subscribed. Go ahead and click that like button for this video and I really appreciate helping this channel succeed. Let's start off with the blade assembly. So on the left here is the OG. The G2 is still made from that same Sterox liquid crystal polymer or LCP. That G2 has a slightly smaller hub, but that big change here, if you look closely at the middle, it's almost like there's another fan imprinted on it, right? This is what Nocto calls the centrifugal turbulator hub. This design helps the fan blades draw air more efficiently. And also since the outer perimeter of the blades, that's where most of the airflow and performance occurs, the grooves work in conjunction with the blades to push air from the center or the lower speed region towards that outer or higher speed perimeter. The new blades feature Noctua's progressive bend impeller. On the OG, the blades were swept forward in the direction of rotation, which is counterclockwise and they are swept forward in a sort of linear fashion, right? The G2 blades are actually not the same. In fact, at the point close to the hub, they're even slightly back swept, and then they begin to change direction to sweep forward. And as mentioned, this design works together with the hub to move some of the air towards that outer perimeter. But at the same time, it does not overload or imbalance the airflow at any point. And the idea is to drive air in a uniform manner across the entirety of the blade. The tips do still feature that super tight 0.5 millimeter clearance. That's not changed. Neat detail is that the blade's cross-sectional profile has been fine-tuned for aerodynamics and it generates maximum lift or air pressure. If you look closely at the outer edge, there's a thicker section or a little winglet, a wing tip, that helps improve efficiency further. The new motor is updated with Noctua's high efficiency ETA perf motor. One thing the motor does is maintain consistent RPMs even when resistance from a heatsink or radiator is present, which would otherwise slow it down somewhat. This frame is similar. Uh, it's still what they call the AAO design, the Advanced Acoustic Optimized Design. But if you look at the exhaust side, the struts are now chamfered. So that's a small detail there. We still have the airflow grooves on the intake side and small indents along the inside of the frame. These are PWM fans. The rotational spec for these are different versus the OG though, because the max speed here is 1,800 RPM versus 2,000 RPM on the OGs. In my testing at equivalent noise levels, the G2s came in at a lower RPM, and that's a design choice here. You know, as you'll see, the performance is uh, better. Speaking of RPMs, in addition to a single fan option like the 140 millimeter G2s, there's gonna be a two fan SX2PP set. The A14 G2s were only offset by plus and minus 25 RPM, but the 120 millimeter G2 PP set will be offset by roughly plus and minus 50 RPM. And what that means specifically is that one fan has a plus 50 RPM max and the other one has a minus 
50 RPM max. So 1850 RPM and 1750 RPM. And the intended application here is um, when you are using the fans next to each other, if you've got two or on a 240 or on an air cooler and a push pull, if they're too close to the same RPM, that can generate some harmonics or so-called beat frequency noise. Sometimes users might perceive that as a growl or kind of repetitive sound like that. And that might be irritating to some. By offsetting the speed of the two fans, you can avoid that. And so when you get the set, one's labeled A, the other is B. So one common application for these will be as radiator fans. And that's how I wanted to test these. And I know some of you will be getting these to use on an open loop, which I'll be using these for soon. Um, or you might be using on a thicker radiator. But what I wanted to focus on for my initial review here was testing on a common application, which is as replacement fans on your typical AIO radiator of uh, you know regular thickness. This one is Cooler Master's Atmos Stealth 240. It's a very high performing unit. And I went ahead and I set up the testing in the Cooler Master NR200 with a Ryzen 9 9950X 3D, which is locked at 1.15 volts. When you run it this way, it ends up running at about 208 watts package power. So perfect for testing the fans here. I used a PP set for this purpose. They are equipped with the radiator gasket and the fans are set up as a side intake. And with the way the radiator is set up against the NR200 side panel and the dust filter, and this just specific to this case, the OGs worked better as a pull configuration. So that's how I have it set up across all fans. Now, these uh, you know push versus pull, that can vary across setups. But what matters for testing here is that we are consistent with how all fans are set up. I tested three different noise levels against other high performance fans. Uh, just to note, there are also several other high performance options that I didn't retest here, such as Lian Lee's P28 and the Alpha Cool Metal, but it actually will not matter too much for the findings since uh, I'd consider the Fantex T30s to be best in 120 millimeter performance, and these uh, beat them. At the moderate noise level, this is only plus 0.4 dBA above the noise floor. The G2s run at a slightly lower RPM versus the G1s for the same noise level. G2 here improves almost three degrees. And as mentioned, they beat the T30s here by almost a degree. At the next higher moderate high fan RPM level, the G2s are at 1430 slash 1520 RPM. At this level, they are ahead of the G1s by almost two degrees. And they are still beating the T30s, albeit by a smaller margin. At the highest speed, as mentioned, the max speed on these is lower than the G1. The noise level is roughly the same. Uh, G2s actually came in about 0.2 dBA lower, so I'll just go ahead and footnote that. But at this level, it is outright the best here, and not to mention slightly quieter. Two degree gap over the OGs and a degree over the T30s, so that is very impressive. All those updates Nocto have made to this guy, it really adds up. So a little sound sample here. Also, I will add in a comparison between the OGs and the G2s as, at noise equivalent levels, just for your reference. So I'd consider the A12 by 25 G1 to be the best optimized 120 millimeter fan before the G2 showed up. And at equivalent noise levels, I found the G2s to run at a lower pitch 
And that's a good thing because a lot of humans tend to perceive that as lower noise, or at least that's something that's easier to tune out in the background. And that makes the G2s further acoustically improved. So on price, the single fan is gonna be the same cost as the outgoing A12 by 25, which is $35 US currently. The outgoing, the older fan will continue to be sold alongside the new one. Um, from what I was told, they're actually gonna be the same price until that inventory runs out. PP set will be 65 US, so you do save a little bit going with the set. So the reason I think the G2 is the flat out best 120 millimeter fan is a combination of the performance, the acoustics, all the technology that goes into making this an amazing fan. And that even though they do come at a high cost for a PC fan, as a point of comparison, the Fantex T30s, they run around $40 each now. And those are a thicker fan, which is harder to fit. These are easier to fit. They're a regular thickness or easy to swap. And they're better and cost less than those. So it's easy to recommend these as the overall best 120 millimeter fan now, bar none. Now there are a few areas to be aware of. At the max 1750 RPM, they do perform very well, but these do not go as fast as some competing fans if you want high or, or very high RPMs. So generally my recommendation is that if you cannot get the performance that you need with your 120 millimeter fans below say 2000 RPM or so, it's more radiators or a bigger radiator that you need. But for some builds, you are constrained to you know only one or two fans and you need that higher speed, the higher RPM fan, right? And you will not get that option here. So that's something to be aware of. Another item is that some users prefer daisy chainable cables. These uh, are not, the G1s weren't either. You will need fan splitters with these, which Noctua does include with a single or the PP set. Uh, one thing is you do have to be careful with daisy chain designs as well though. Uh, for example, this T30 that I have here, really nice fan uh, nonetheless, it does not work uh, because this is the second one this has happened to. This uh, daisy chain design is a weak point on this fan and the cables have sheared off, basically pulled off of the connection point here. So that's a weak point. It's something that you can repair, but um, in this scenario, I'd much prefer one solid cable like Noctua continues to provide versus something that may uh, be a potential weak point. Some use cases, as mentioned, replacement AIO fans. Uh, now, unless you're after every last degree, I wouldn't recommend replacing an already high performance fan like the Mobius 120s that came off of my uh, Atmos 240, right? But if you have more run-of-the-mill AIO fans, this is a very easy way to get better temps or lower noise. Another use case is a custom loop, thicker rads, these are gonna shine. One thing is if you are setting up a 360, for example, you could get two PP sets and do A, B, and A, or B, A, and B configuration. You'll have an extra fan to use as a case fan or some other purpose at this point. Or you could also get a PP set plus a single fan on its own and then run that single fan on its own header and then offset the fan curve of that fan as needed. Again, this is uh, more work than is necessary, right? Because you may not actually have that B frequency occurring in your system and and you may not even notice it to begin with, right? So if you are sensitive to that, that's something to consider. Another application is replacing fans on an air cooler. The 140 millimeter G2s worked very well on the D15 G2s and even as replacements on the old D15. Uh, so as long as you don't need rounded corners for your tower cooler, these will work very well on any 120 millimeter tower or a top down cooler. And you can also get the PP set if you're doing a push pull setup. If you have a Nocto U12A, you have the G1s already. So unless you want the PP set for noise reasons, for performance, I don't think most users need to swap out G1s for the G2s. Uh, we'll have some hard data for you shortly on the heat sinks. But in general, I think if you have the G1s already, there's that uh, cost consideration here, right? Whether there's enough performance difference to go through the cost and hassle sw switching everything out because the G1s are still very incredible fans. You can certainly use the G2s as case fans. Uh, they're very, very pricey for that purpose if you're only running at low speeds. But if you have the budget and the desire, they will work great as case fans, uh, extravagant. You could of course just set the desired fan curve with the regular ones, but if you want, Noctua further has a low speed skew which will top out at 1100 RPM. So that's the LS skew. I'll say that if you have the OGs as case fans, that's definitely one area where I don't recommend and I don't see the value added of upgrading since you pretty much will get the same performance overall at low RPMs. But yeah, overall, I'm very excited about 
about these the g2s are the reference going forward into the future if you want the black ones the chromax ones those are not coming until q1 2026 at least q1 2026 but if you're like me you like the tanner brown you wear it like a badge of honor then i think you will love these and yeah, definitely go ahead and check these out so if you found this review helpful please give a thumbs up i'll be doing plenty of builds with these so make sure you are subscribed and go ahead and check out the fans with the links down below and big thanks for watching today